so here's how you say it. You say Hatichada Hatichachka. Hatichada Hatichachka. No, no, no. I want to kuchka. I want to kuchka. Okay. Hatichada Hatichachka. Hatichada and Hatichka. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, we are here in the United States of America with the legendary man, the pastor, the comrade behind the saying Hatichada, Hatichachka, and various other things. Uh, comrade Pastor Evan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure. And, and also, finally, really great to meet you as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a... It's very expensive to come and interview you, you know, others, I just call them to come from Harare CBD to come over to the interview, but now with Comrade Pastor Evan, uh, one has to book a ticket, fly to America, but we are now here, we got here by Guinea Comrades. So, uh, Pastor, uh, you know, the first question I want to ask you is, you know, your first video that you shot uh, went viral, completely viral. Did, I mean, did you wake up the next day and realize only then it had gone viral and you were like oh my god i i meant to to share this with my friends love more and tindo on facebook messenger and by mistake i put it on my wall and now i'm the accidental leader of a movement i mean what was going on there well you know what i think the it was sharing it on facebook was very intentional you know mm -hmm. it's something that i'd done before you know where i shared videos where i was teaching things uh, you know, for Christian living. But this one, I, I knew I was going to share it on, uh, you know, on Facebook. I didn't mm -hmm. intend to become the leader of a movement when I did it. It was just to air frustration. And to be honest, I was, I was just frustrated at the time and really still am frustrated with the condition of my country, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, so are you an agent of, of Mark Zuckerberg and are you, is, really, <laughs> is Facebook really behind the revolution? Well, you know, it's, I've been accused of, uh, you know, being funded by so many different agencies and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and Facebook is a tool that people use for anything, marketing their businesses, uh, uh, you know, creating friends and events and things like that. So, you know, whilst they are not behind it directly, it's a platform that I just use like anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with now a serious question. What do you say to Zimbabweans who feel that you betrayed them by starting this movement, the hashtag this flag movement, by inspiring people, by sharing this slogan of Hatichada Hatichachka, you know, we don't want anymore and we are not fearful anymore. And then you got scared mm -hmm. and left the country mm -hmm. and came to America. Mm -hmm. So so what do you say to that? Uh, it's it's important for me to be to be honest about the fact that you know, I did get to a place where I, I got scared. I mean, I think I would be lying to anybody if I said throughout the whole thing, I've never been scared and I will never be scared. You do when you come face to face with a system that is brutal. And um, that's what I saw. But my resolve to continue building Zimbabwe has not been deterred and has not changed. And so I still remain firmly established in that war cry, Atichada, Atichachka. To raise our voices. We're not afraid to raise our voices anymore. We're not afraid to call you out on the injustices, on the corruption that we can see is, is being done blatantly. You know? And so I think for me, that is where the, the, the war cry is. And so uh, to say that I betrayed people for me is something that, I, that actually hurts me when I hear people say that. Because I have risked and still have risked, as I still am risking everything that I am and everything that I have to be able to put the issues of Zimbabwe on the map. Since I left Zimbabwe a couple of months ago, or literally every day of my life is devoted to putting the narrative of what's going on in Zimbabwe in the eyes and in the ears of every important office and person I can find here in the United States and anywhere else across the world. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, another question that a lot of people I think are asking is, you know, when are you coming back home? Because, you know, just you just let us know, we'll organize a big party for you at the magistrate's court. We'll have Ja Prazer playing, we'll invite all of your good CIO friends, you know, we'll have a bed set up for you in Central Hotel or Police Station. When are you coming home, Comrade? I, I think we need to change the venue. 
the magistrate's court is not a it's not a, exactly an exciting place for me to have a, <laughs> a welcome back party mm. but um i've always asserted um in the last few months wherever i've spoken to the media or to anybody that zimbabwe is my home and um i am fully intended on going back you know citizen number one the president uh, said that zimbabwe uh, is not a place for people like me or, or people like me do not have a place you know in Zimbabwe and I think it's unfortunate but you know I'm firmly decided that Zimbabwe is my home and um, once I'm ready hopefully that's going to be soon I'll be making my way home but you'll know you, mm -hmm. you guys will be the first ones to know I'll make sure you're the first ones to know no great we'll be there at the airport <laughs> to, to welcome you back with dancers and youthies and other things <laughs> youthies <laughs> he was stuck on a desert island with Robert Mugabe, what would you say to him? <laughs> Big you know, question. I would probably say to him, mm. yeah, No, 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 no. But no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me think about that. Mm. I think I would. I mean, since there would just be the two of us on the island, mm. I think the first thing I would say to him is, uh, "Comrade, I think I'm going to lead." Okay, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's um. It's an interesting question because, you know, he's not an enemy to me. I don't mm. view him as an enemy, mm. you know. Um, and I think I, would, I think I would ask him to tell me about his earlier days of leadership. What inspired him? What drove him to give his all? Mm. What drove him to give his best for Zimbabwe? And then I'd ask him what changed. Because I think something changed and if he were to be honest, he would he would acknowledge that something changed. And so those would be very important questions for me to ask. What, what drove you when you were younger? When you were, when you were my age, I'm about to turn 40, and that's pretty much the time that you know, he started getting involved. What drove you? What inspired you to give your all and your best? And then what changed? What changed? Mm -hmm. And I think the reason I would want to ask him those questions is that I don't want to make those kinds of mistakes that he has made. So I want to know from him what the, what the mistakes were. But comrade, uh, we just want to say thank you for starting this flag and we look forward to you coming back home uh, very soon. Uh, you've, when, when, you've said that. When, when, <laughs> when, uh, you let us know when. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll broadcast it. Thank you, comrade. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. on the show. Thank you for having me on the show today. And I'm not going to say your usual goodbye because I've seen your I've seen your broadcast. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that. You don't. You, oh, you don't. You don't say that. No, 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 oh no, no, you're a man of God. Eh? <laughs> exactly. So, so I I, I say uh, uh, thank you and futsek and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>